Number nine, the emission spectrum of cesium contains two lines whose frequencies are A, 3.45 times 10 to the 14th hertz, and B, 6.53 times 10 to the 14 hertz. What are the wavelengths and energies per photon of the two lines, and what color are the lines? All right, so we have A and B, so let me just write this over here. So this would be A, and this would be B. Let me put a line between them, just so I have room. Okay, now we did a very similar question with this one before, so go back to that one if you want like a full, you know, breakdown, but this one will be kind of, you know, a more quicker, quick pace. All right, so they give you the frequencies, so that's a V, right? Frequency is 3.45 times 10 to the 14th hertz for this one. Now just know that hertz is the same thing as seconds to the negative one per second. So it's still the standard unit, all right? So whether you say hertz or whether you say second to the minus one, it's still the standard unit for frequency for when you plug into your formulas. And for B, the frequency is 6.53 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Okay. So the first thing that they want us to find out is wavelength. We should know how to go from a frequency to a wavelength. That's using the speed of light formula, right? C equals wavelength times frequency. And C, I'll just put it up here. C is a constant number, 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So memorize that number. You could, you know, say this whole thing is three because it's super close, but this is the number that they give you in your um, textbook. So that's what I'll, I'll supply. All right, so let's go. 2.998 times 10 to the eighth equals, we're looking for wavelength, and now we have the frequency, 3.45 times 10 to the 14th. Solve for wavelength, so divide by 3.45 times 10 to the 14th on both sides, times 10 to the 14th. Okay, so 2.998 times 10 to the eighth divided by 3.45 times 10 to the 14th. And your wavelength for A would be basically, we'll say 8 8.69 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. So that's the first one. And now if you wanna do the same thing for B, let's just do that. So C equals wavelength times frequency. So the same setup again, 2.998 times 10 to the eighth equals the wavelength times, but now we're plugging in this number, right? So six point, oops, 6.53 times 10 to the 14th. Divide by 6.53 times 10 to the 14th. And that will give you your wavelength. So for the wavelength for this one would be 2.998 times 10 to the eighth divided by 6.53 times 10 to the 14th. And we get 4.59 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. So we figured out the wavelengths for both of them in meters. So box these answers off. This is the wavelength for A, and this is the wavelength for B. Now we need to just find the energies, and energy is equal to E. So we could use the formula E equals HV, or you could use E equals HC over wavelength, they're the same exact thing. So whichever one you prefer, I'm just gonna use this one because it's less variables. Now just remember that H is also a standard number, right? H is Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules per second. So you need to also memorize that one. So put a star next to that one, memorize both C and H. All right, so here we go. For A, energy equals 6.626, times 10 to the negative 34th times our frequency, which is the answer that they gave us above here. So that's 3 point, oops, 3.45 times 10 to the 14th. And now we get our energy. So E equals 
6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th times 3.45 times 10 to the 14th. And you get 2.29 times 10 to the negative 19th joules per the one photon. So box that answer off. That's your answer to A in energy for the first part. Now let's just do the same thing for B. Energy equals Planck's constant times frequency. So E equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th times the frequency which they gave us of 6.53 times 10 to the 14th. And solve for that. Energy equals, let's see, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th times 6.53 times 10 to the 14th, we get 4.33, 4.33 times 10 to the negative 19th joules per one photon. So that's this energy in for, for B, basically. So we got these two answers. We got wavelength, we got energy. Now we have to find out what color are these lines. Now, in order to use your line spectra, you always have to just uh, match up your values to the values that are given in the line spectra. In this color spectra, they give you from 4,000 angstroms to 7,000 angstroms. This is the one that's in your textbook. So just know that angstrom, A-N-G, strum, which is that A, is always a unit of distance or length. So the color that we can, you know, find out what color it is has to be kind of like a distance, not kind of, it has to be a type of a distance. And the only information that we have is a wavelength. So technically these angstroms are wavelength values, but they're just in different units. We have our two wavelengths here, but they're in meters, right? So we have to convert from meters to angstroms, and then we can match them up on our diagram. Now, if you want to go from meters to angstroms, you just times by 10 to the 10th. Just know that if you want to go backwards, angstroms to meters, you just divide by 10 to the 10th. So I'm going to put over here A, we got 8.69 times 10 to the negative 7th meters. And then for B, we have 6 point, nope, that's the frequency. We got 4.59 times 10 to the negative 7th meters. So all we have to do is just times by 10 to the 10th for both of them. And then we would get our angstrom value, which then we can figure out what color it would be. So this one would be 8,690 uh, angstroms. And the second one would be 4,590 angstroms. Okay, so let's look at it. 8,690 angstroms. Here's 7,000. So we're getting way more than that. So it's like a deep, 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 deep red, right? But still probably red nonetheless. For this one, 4,500, not basically 4,590 angstroms, let's see, would be roughly here. So in this, if I just change the color, this is basically just a deep blue. So you would see one line in your line spectra as red, and the other one would be a deep blue. That's it, basically. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. If it did, hit the like button. Let me know down in the comments. Love to hear from you guys. I'll respond back. We could have a, we could have a chit chat. Um, but yeah, if you want, you could click the subscribe button too. That would not only help you with knowing when our next batch of questions come out, but it will give access to everybody else to know about this channel so that they can also get help with the OpenStax textbooks. And getting that sense of community is cool. So yeah, thank you so much. I'll see you guys in number 10. Bye-bye.